The life path of Fariza Ungarsinova, a famous poetess of our country, began in the sacred land of Mangistau, the land of renowned batirs, akins, and saints. It has always been impossible to be born on this land and not get enchanted by its ancient legends, where the very air is saturated with them, as this is the aura of that land. And from her childhood, Fariza absorbed the love to mesmerizing rhymes through the legends her mother Kalima read to her. Big Nur Kisikov, writer, author of numerous novels, stories, and poems, member of jury of literature contests, inspirer and organizer of Kityap Fest Festival. Apparently, it was then that Fariza realized what her calling was. However, she chose literature as a profession through pedagogy. After graduating from the Guriev Pedagogical Institute, she began to work as Kazakh language and literature teacher. Later, she became the head teacher and then headmaster of the school. But in 1966, she switched to journalism, securing a job as a literary employee in the regional Komunistichiski Trude newspaper. Since that time, she began to actively write. It was then that she published her first poetry book, Sandugash. Fariza started writing early. Her first poem was born, as it was said, accidentally. A lively boy in the Aul was teasing the girl, so she retaliated. The boy flew to the ground. Raised in the traditions of the steppe people, accustomed to believing that every man is a hero, Fariza was puzzled and made fun of the unlucky hero in eight rhymed lines. This was the start of her poetry quote from the Kazakh literature book by S.N. Borodulina. For a long time, Fariza's works were published only in the Kazakh language, and then in 1977, the first Russian translations of her books came out. Later, the works of Ongar Sinova were translated into many other languages of the world. She was very serious about the translations of her poems, and for more than 40 years she worked with only one translator, her faithful companion, poetess Tatiana Frolovskaya. This is how one of Fariza Ongarsinova's poems sounds in her translation. Вся белоснежная, у печки хлопочет обо мне и напевает, что лучше пекла в жизни не бывает, где наша юрта держится едва, храня людей от пушечного ветра, где под песком шевелится трава и в нас жива растительная вера. Today, Fariza Ungarsinova is probably the most famous and widely read Kazakh poet who wrote in the Kazakh language. She penned a number of poetry collections, Nightingale, Melody, Restless Time, and Proud Generation. She is also the author of the documentary story, Kamshat, and a number of fictional essays published in her collection entitled, Height. However, perhaps the most important confirmation of her talent and relevance is that modern Kazakhstani youth are familiar with her works. When Googling Fariza Ungarsinova, you can find dozens of videos featuring young people reciting her poems that they learned by heart. And these recitations are very heartfelt and touching. Fariza Ungarsinova's extremely poignant lyric works were also set to music. The famous Kazakhstani composer Bolat Kohamanov wrote four songs on her poems, Aisha Bibi, Jaik Tin Tolkien Dari, Jurigin Jurigim Dia, and Omir Sinim. By the way, the latter was recognized as the best at the Republican Jas Kanat competition in 2004. <laughs> It is important to mention that before writers and poets rarely manage to engage exclusively in creativity, so Fariza continued to work in the journalistic field, 
alternately heading the Republican Pioneers of Kazakhstan newspaper, the Pioneer magazine, and the Tumar Literary and Art magazine. But at the same time, she never forgot about her calling, writing not only poems, but also essays, stories, as well as critical articles on the works of Kazakh poets Abdilda Tajibayev, Mukagali Makataev, and the Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. She would also translate the literary works of her colleagues into the Kazakh language. An interesting fact, back then many writers were engaged in translations, which can be regarded as another confirmation of their literary talent. In recent years, a very active process of translating world bestsellers into the Kazakh language has been going on in Kazakhstan. The most sensational example, perhaps, was the Kazakh edition of the saga about the young wizard Harry Potter, written by the British writer Joanne Rowling. A number of non-fiction publications have also been translated, such as Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, and The Fourth Industrial Revolution by Klaus Schwab. Another Kazakh language novelty that has appeared on the shelves is a series of pocket books from the Kasim Baspa Uyi Karaganda Publishing House. The series includes works of the classics of Russian literature, as well as a number of world masterpieces, such as The Little Prince by Antoine de saint exupéry Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe and many others. Fariza Ongarsinova was always worried about the future of the book. Therefore, she became one of the initiators of the Republican One Country, One Book initiative. The aim of this initiative was to popularize Kazakh literature. She also supported young talents by participating in the festival of creative youth, Shabit. Critics call her works a breakthrough of the 20th century. She was the first one to portray the Kazakh woman as a free nomad and a brave Amazon rather than an oppressed woman of the East. Here is what one of her heroines says. I am a nightingale fed by wormwood. Compare me with a star and water. Here is the entire stalk. But know that I am worthy, so that comparing with lightning simplicity, I could glorify the sons of my land. Fariza praised the independence and strength of a woman who is not afraid of hardships. She often dedicated her poems to famous women, who is she Dina Nurpisova, singers Bibigul Tuligenova and Rosa Baklamova, composer Gaziza Zhubanova, and poet Mariam Khachimzhanova. Her entire collection of poems entitled Listen Living People, Fariza dedicated to the heroes of the Soviet Union, Aliya Moldagulova and Manshuk Mametova. But among Fariza's works, there is one that I would like to talk about in detail today. It is distinguished by a certain revolutionary spirit and poetic involvement of the author and protagonist. This is the poem, The Diamond Blade, Three Meetings with Machambiet. Machambiet Otim I Suli was a friend and brother in arms of Isatai Taiman Uli, one of the leaders and an active participant in the peasant anti feudal uprising of the Kazakhs, which took place from 1836 to 1837. He was a prominent poet and a king of the first half of the 19th century. Machambiet composed over 100 poems, which were recorded by his followers. It is important to mention that many Kazakh writers and poets dedicated their works to Machambiet. Anwar Alimjanov wrote The Arrow of the Machambiet novel, which expanded the understanding of the image of the Batir. People's poet Mukhtar Shakhanov dedicated a number of his poems to Machambiet. Olja Sulimyanov was so fascinated by Machambiet that he passed on this admiration to his friend, the poet Andrei Vosnysinski who wrote the following lines. Reading Machambiet, I feel Asia in me, antenna in my office will quiver, just like an arrow sticking out of the wall. Machambiet is a subtle connoisseur of all the immense diversity of mental life, a wise philosopher. We are captivated by his tender and sublime love confessions. The sufferings the poet had endured hardened his heart, but he never lost the ability to sympathize with people. 
his feelings did not weaken. For me, the poetic heritage of Machambet is our steps, song of songs, wrote the poetess. The plot of the poem is explained in the title. The spirit of the Batir comes to Fariza in a dream and reproaches her with displeasure for spending time in idle ignorance. He says that the lot of the poet is to strike the hearts of enemies with a diamond sword. Your earthly world is convenient without us. I'm delusional, but I'm believable. I'm flying to you. I am a spirit. I am dust. How could you sleep so calmly at night? Didn't you dare to portray midday heat and midnight darkness? You acted recklessly. The fervor of youth is evident. From luminous mirages, such a bold move, to overthrow the indisputability of light and recognize the target in the sun, descendant drunk with inspiration. This world will never rest. I am your ancestor, accept me. Modern poets says the Batir have become singers of tenderness and useless feelings. They sleep soundly and are indifferent to the fate of the offended and unfortunate. Meanwhile, words born without fire disgrace both the Creator and His creation. Give up these poetic nonsense. You must know the real power of the word. The word that will move the universe. The word that is able to cause certain destruction. Remember the quill is a diamond blade and you must become worthy of this weapon. Fariza wakes up confused, fearfully recalling the words of the poet. She hopes that it was just a dream, an accidental mirage that will melt into the light of day. But night falls and Mahambet reappears. He is sad as he is remembering his friend and brother in arms, Isatai Taiman Uli whom he always admired. Was never subject to change, but tear without fear and reproach. He was an example for the brave. He loved Kazakh traditions and could, when saw the people suffering, rush to the enemy in an instant. He was ready to compensate a lack of happiness with his blood. With pain in his soul, the poet speaks about Isatai. What does this strange dream mean? Fariza eyes puzzled, waking up after the second encounter with the poet. How can one bless their followers in such a strange way and then leave them without any support? The indefatigable Mahambet appears for the third time and calls on his chosen one to always feed the hungry, to warm them when the cold rages, and in the heat to cast a shadow for the orphan. This is the essence of the poet. And waking up, the author finally realizes why the guest was so intrusive in getting into her dreams. She finally realizes the meaning of his words, awakening not only physically, but also spiritually. I want and I can go with you, ready for the last stand. I feel the lump of undone in my throat. I must measure life with verse, as in happiness in the verse must they believe. Give me your hand. Be my guide. Generally speaking, communication with Mahambet, with whom Farizao felt a spiritual and blood relationship, lasted several decades and probably even her entire life. It was not for nothing that the famous cultural scientist and writer, Awis Khan Kodar, called Fariza Mahambet in a skirt. He also said that Ongar Sinova's poetry is a stream of incredible passions, an interweaving of the most varied intonations that are not often found in world poetry. In 2003, when the 200th anniversary of Mahambiet's birth was celebrated under the auspices of UNESCO, Fariza Ongarsinova published the book Mahambiet, Abused World. It was then that she summed up her long-lasted dialogue with the hero and liberated herself from the burden of his words. <laughs>